I'm going to try a little bit of a different format today. Maybe uh, just describe a little bit about what I'm doing here. Beta testing SketchUp for iPad. Um, it does require that you have iOS 15 installed. And, um, you know, many of the things have been implemented. Not everything is implemented from the desktop version, but uh, uh, many, many things. And so testing here, the fluidity by which one can model. Um, and uh, we have been modeling the Hooper house, um, which is a house that uh, Marcel Breuer designed for a client uh, in Baltimore, Maryland. I like uh, this example because uh, uh, it's a simple house. Come consists of two parts, uh, a living living room sort of space with kitchen and then a more private zone on the far side of the model here, which uh, includes the bedrooms. And so we're now at the point uh, in the model where um, uh, we are beginning to model the windows. And so in the design of the house makes use of um, repetition, a lot of repetition in the windows. And so taking advantage using the components feature of SketchUp to create um, repeatable components. And so in here I'm copying and then constraining uh, to the green axis, as you can see there. Uh, so the tool, the move tool allows you to then select uh, the various axes that you can use to constrain the movement so taking advantage of that feature and then you know creating some guides to uh, align certain uh, elements together so in this in this case finding the center line of the thicker walls which happen to be stone stone walls in this home and uh, uh, then creating a guideline there to align the windows um, and, and so you see uh, we use the, the hand gestures to rotate and pan around to uh, find a good viewpoint uh, by which to uh, begin to slide geometry and, and align it properly. So in here we rotate to the inside of the home to get a better view. And uh, trying to snap to a midpoint, which uh, can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Um, but in here, finding that midpoint and then aligning it to the guide that we just created. So we find that the stone wall, the, the opening for the wall is still a little bit too big. So we can correct that by just using the push-pull and pushing that into the uh, window. And, you know, just pulling back a little bit to review what, um, what just been done. Um, just uh, confirming a dimension there to the grid line uh, that was established previously. And then making use of tags to uh, control visibility of various parts. In this case, the roof, it's in its own tag. And you can see that we can make a little correction there. And that allows you to uh, work inside and outside of the model um, fairly fluidly. You can see the panning and orbiting around is very, very smooth on the iPad. So it's making use of, uh, I guess, the, um, the architecture of the iOS to really simplify and smooth uh, transitions and movements around the model. So here, focusing now the attention on uh, the windows in the other bedrooms, um, secondary bedrooms of the home. And so, again, copying a component that was already made and then rotating that to align with the um, exterior wall of those bedrooms. And rotating to get a better look and um, just finding that is correctly aligned. Just sliding that, and, you know, into a better position there. You can see that the distance pop up uh, always pops up after you um, request a move uh, of geometry, and so that allows you to type in a particular number. So in here, just taking the uh, the roof element and just hiding that for the time being, so we can take a better look 
and then just deleting some uh, placeholder geometry that um, we have placed in there uh, just to get a sense of the space and the dimensions that, that are needed. You can see that the walls don't quite align to the module of the window, so we're going to fix that by moving some geometry back in. Uh, context menu at the bottom uh, has tools that are um, associated with whatever tool you happen to have activated. And so in, with the select tool, you have the possibility for adding um, to the selection. And in this case, we're clicking in uh, onto that wall and that little trim element at the front and finding the constraint lock uh, y-axis so that we can move the entire thing together. So here we move the trim and the wall together to uh, align with the window and then then move the window uh, uh, forward a little bit. And this is that context menu that I just described. And then here, just grabbing some geometry and constraining it to the green axis to find better alignment. So in here, rotating the view to uh, get a better better angle here, and then uh, pushing and pulling the wall there to, to meet the window. And zooming back out um, just to get a better view of the, uh, the work so far, all of the interior walls are in their own tag. Uh, checking on the settings in here a little bit, um, uh, there's the ability to heighten uh, reveal the rest of the model when you're working within the context of a group or a component. And then the ability to delete all of the guides that have been created uh, all at once, uh, which is a feature that is present in the desktop version. Uh, they made that available here as well. And then just rotating around the front of the house to um, create the front door entry. This is a house that you enter into a, uh, a vestibule of sorts and you have the choice of turning right um, or to the left, uh, to the bedrooms uh, on the left hand side. But in here the, the exterior walls frame the courtyard that has a bit of an opening into the landscape and so using some of the existing geometry here which um, moving up you can see that uh, it also creates that auto fault feature. But in here, copying, taking a segment or uh, uh, an edge and copying that down uh, some amount, about three feet uh, down, three foot one, and then bridging, bridging that across and you can see that the geometry then connects and you can heal those edges or clean those edges up by simply erasing them. And the erase gesture is, is quite interesting in that you select the erase feature and then you simply, with your uh, Apple Pencil, just uh, uh, rub it off uh, as if you were just uh, erasing um, a line on a piece of paper, which to me it uh, it's the feature makes it so that you're almost um, as if you were sketching by hand in a way. Um, so in uh, returning back to the front doors, uh, making use of uh, the components. Um, and copying those forward here. Um, the entrance to the home is uh, a bit of a portal through the uh, stone wall there. And so um, the door simply slide along uh, parallel to the, the stone wall. And so here we're finding um, the center line of the space and we're gonna start to move uh, some geometry around. I made a couple of mistakes in here about you know where these dimensions um, were located, so we can come back and correct that. So 
Again, taking these two doors that are components and making them unique so that they're different than the doors uh, on the other side of the uh, vestibule there. So in here, entering that component and just modifying some geometry so that um, you can see here that uh, the other door then change changes uh, at the same time, and then the glass group within that component, uh, we'll repair that uh, in a minute here. So then just moving to the other side. Just taking that glass piece and then sliding that geometry back to meet the frame. And something that's still quite not uh, fully working yet is uh, sometimes you, you see the camera sort of jump off um, and while you're orbiting, and I think that there's uh, just a little bit of a bug there that I'm sure will be fixed in future, future versions of the app. Um, and here just finding that um, you know my math didn't quite work out when I was uh, sliding some of these walls together seeing that it's 120 inches but somehow the doors are, are going beyond that a little bit so we're going to quickly fix that by just sliding the stone wall And uh, just getting um, some of these lengths corrected here. And the stone opening is a little bit smaller than the doors themselves. And I suppose the idea was that when you walk through that portal, you see nothing but glass and um, glass and stone. And the, the doors themselves are set in from the stone wall a little bit. So we're going to close that off by adding a little piece of wall there. And uh, as the detail suggests, uh, and, and by the way, these, these um, all, all my knowledge of this house is coming through a wonderful website that the Marcel Breuer Archive has put together that uh, contains um, all its drawings for the home uh, digitized. So it's an incredible resource if you're doing uh, you know, the sort of research uh, to be able to go into the archive there and uh, see all of the original drawings. So here we've copied the sidewall to the other side and that really completes uh, for the time being the entrance piece to the home. Then um, just checking on some lengths in here, um, taking some dimensions. And notice how in the materials palette, um, the, the glass material was the currently selected material. So anything that you try to paint now with that uh, will be painted uh, with that particular color. In here, I'm just doing a little correction here to the um, uh, the door frame uh, itself, uh, just uh, widening uh, those elements and then making use of the X-ray um, uh, face settings here to get into the inside the component and then modify group elements that are within that. Um, that way um, uh, it just um, helps with the alignment of the glass piece with the frame and so with the x-ray tool we were able to look inside now and um, make the adjustments that we need to make as you can see me here grabbing the um, the face there and then sliding that back into alignment then i can turn off the x-ray off and complete the exercise uh, 
and for the time being this is what will stop um, windows and doors to the home and on the next chapter we'll maybe take a closer look at uh, the materials.